presenting to you the ESP32 Dev Kit with Shieldboard. ESP32 Dev Kit V1 Base Shieldboard, as the name suggests, is ESP32 compatible board which was designed and developed for beginners to learn programming and electronics, particularly in developing Internet of Things solutions. It is also a useful platform to test our code without having to connect to other devices. The idea for a shield board came up when we tried to find a solution on how we could minimize the time needed for circuit troubleshooting. Often, the challenge is to figure out whether the problem lies on the electronics or programming parts. The problems multiply when students increase in numbers. To address these issues, the team decided to design and develop a base shield board compatible with ESP32 microcontroller with built-in SMD LEDs tied into different input-output pins. Thanks to its double-layer PCB design, the ESP32 DevKit V1 base shield board proved to be compact, lightweight and durable. The board is also equipped with 25 SMD LEDs for its input and output pins, 30 male pin heads for ESP32 pin out, and 8 male pin heads respectively for its 5 volt supply, 3.3 volt supply, and for grounding purposes. The base shield board that we present today is the result of continuous improvement process. The team follow a strict production process that includes designing the schematics, generating board file, arranging components, routing, adding silk screen and copper pore, and lastly, error checking and generating Gerber files. To help with the production process, the team uses the free version of Eagle and Fusion 360 by Autodesk. Eagle is an electronic design automation software that lets printed circuit board designers seamlessly connect schematic diagrams, components, placement, PCB routing, with comprehensive library content. But first, it is wiser to just download the symbols and footprints for the ESP32 DevKit microcontroller from Snap EDA. Snap EDA is a free library of symbols and footprints for millions of electronics components. Once the library had been downloaded, it is placed in a specified folder. Next is to tell Eagle Cat where to look for the library. The location path is modified to tell Eagle exactly the folder location and name where it will find the library. If done correctly, you should now see the folder with the library show up. The PCB design process started with a schematic of our circuit. First, search for the required components. And place it into the workplace. It's best to place all schematic symbols on the workplace canvas before drawing any wires. These schematics will serve as a blueprint for laying out the traces and placing the components on the PCB. Next is to wire up all the components used in the project. 
these wires will become traces or copper pores. A completed schematic is then converted into a PCB layout consisting of component footprints and red lines. Red lines refer to electrical connection that have not yet been converted into physical connections. The next process is to arrange components and then uses the red line as a guide for creating traces, copper pole and bias. A via is a small through hole that carries an electrical connection to a different PCB layer. Double-sided PCB design will allow a higher density of components and increases heat dissipation. This is the pad where we will solder all the components to the board. Once the design process is completed in Eagle, the last step before sending it off to the fabrication house is to generate the Gerber files. Then the Gerber files can be uploaded to JLC PCB website. Upon receival, the PCB is thoroughly inspected. Components are then mounted and soldered. As the direct impact, all ESP32 pinout is now accessible. Circuit tidiness is better. The indicator LEDs make troubleshooting much more easier and thus reduce the amount of time for troubleshooting and also circuit assembly.